Well, it's been a little while since I said anything about cassette decks, so here's my latest project. I've been working on reviving my good old Technics RS M234X cassette deck. I bought this cassette deck off eBay a while ago, and the seller said it was in perfect shape. Worked great, everything was alright with it. And it looked just incredible. There's not a scratch or anything on it to speak of at all. But it had some definite problems. It didn't maintain speed very well. It had essentially no take-up torque on either rewinding or fast-forward operations. And it also did not like running past the leader on a cassette. And this was, this was a bigger problem with newer and thinner and longer cassettes. What it would do after the leader passed over the pinch roller is it would end up uh, flipping the tape over in a weird sort of way and mangling it at the same time. And hopefully that problem is one that I can attribute to bad belts. The interesting thing about this machine, there's a picture of it right there in the service manual so you can get a basic idea of what it looks like before it's all taken apart. This machine shares the same basic mechanism as my dad's Technics RSM14 and also as the RSM218 deck that I also uh, picked up recently and adjusted the speed on. So all these decks share the same basic mechanism, but this one's a little different because unlike the others which have their controls at the base, this thing, zoom in there again, has its controls right next to the cassette deck as you can clearly see. So it's got to have a little bit of an adaptation on the mechanism, which is shown over here in this picture. You can see those multiple metal rods. Each one of them drives a function like rewind, fast forward, or play on the main mechanism. And so there's a little sidecar, which is actually this thing sitting right over here, that connects with these rods to drive the main mechanism. And I've got to put all this back together as soon as I get the new belts in place. And here comes the fun part. And I mean fun with the biggest, per, uh, biggest quotation marks around it that you can possibly imagine. And they might very definitely qualify as scare quotes. <laughs> because this is the part I always hate, and this is not quite as evil as the JC Penny tape deck, at least not yet. But I've got to get this thin ribbon belt to go around this big flywheel here that's actually connected to the capstan drive, as well as some part of the auto stop mechanism. But I've also got to get this little belt to go around this outer pulley here on the motor and then when I've joined the two halves of the mechanism back together I've got to get that uh, belt wrapped around this drive right here in order for everything to work properly and I dare say that that is going to involve a little bit of swearing probably yep that was about as bad as I thought it was going to be getting the two first belts on this big one around the flywheel and this other one, I don't have this screwed together, so heaven help me if it comes apart. But this other one that goes around the, uh, the wheel, the pulley there that drives this gear train, those weren't too hard, but getting this one back into place was a real booger. It took me about 15 minutes worth of fiddling around to do it, so hopefully all these belts are the proper size and everything is all sweetness and light there. If it's not, I think I'm going to scream. Now it's time to go ahead and put this mechanism back together. See, I measured all these belts, and I deducted between 5 and 10 percent, depending on how stretched out they looked. But the one thing I could not find an exact match for, this long flat belt's inner circumference was 9.5 inches. And the closest I could get was a 9-inch belt, without going over the size that I needed. And that's a little tight for my liking, so I'm, I'm hoping that it really did stretch out that much, because out of all of these belts... This one looked the worst out of any of them, so hopefully it stretched a lot, and hopefully I won't overwhelm the ability of the little motor to pull the load and run the tape at the right speed. But now I've got to go ahead and put this mechanism back together. And one of the first things I have to do in order to do that is I have to fasten down this motor assembly, and then I've got this backing plate, and this cover, and then these rods that link the uh, operation button unit over here back to the main cassette deck. And then it'll be time to actually put the deck itself back together by putting this display module back in and basically reassembling the entire front end, which you can see taken apart right there. It's looking more and more like it did before I took it apart, which is always a good thing. I've got the flywheel retaining cover back in place now. And the next thing I have to do 
is I have to reattach the operation button unit. And then I'll almost be through with this. Now there are all three connection plates. The first one, the longest one, is the fast forward connection. No, I'm sorry, this is the fast forward connection plate. This one is the recording connection plate. And then this one up here is the rewinding connection plate. So that's what all these do. Now where's the playback one? The playback one is actually this little white arm that is inside there. And I actually had to pull that back into the uh, playback position to get this button unit set up properly. But now that I have all three of these arms attached here, I can go ahead and put this little retainer back in place to keep them from falling off of their respective shafts. And then I'll be ready to start reassembling the tape deck itself and hopefully when I get it to put together everything will just work beautifully because this is a really nice tape deck and I would like to get it going again. And here's the basic mechanism all the way put back together again. Got to reconnect all these leads to their appropriate locations in the unit but that won't be a big deal. Got this little clamp over here that holds the wires in place, firmly secured. All the belts are on and seem to be in good working condition. And now for the first time, since nothing will go flying, you can actually see the operational portion of this cassette deck. And you can see how uh, the designers at Technics did this. The tape transports right here, with the playback head at the bottom, of course. The counter's over here, and then the button unit just sits right off to the side. So this, uh, they clearly got a lot of mileage out of this particular design before they would have phased it out with anything else. I don't know what other machines use this mechanism, but I'll bet a pretty fair number of them from the 1980s do. So now I've just got to pull the unit out from under my desk and work at putting this back in, reconnecting all these cables, putting the display unit back in, and everything should be set. Sure does look different when it's all pulled apart, doesn't it? Doesn't hardly look like the picture at all. But in just a couple more minutes, I'll have all these connections made, the mechanism screwed back into place, and then I can actually start putting the front panel back together like it needs to be. Alright, I'm creeping ever closer toward completion of the goal here. Got all the wiring put back together in the right places. Should be safe to power this thing up in this state, so move some of my records down here. Move some of the other stuff. Make sure there's nothing under this that could ruin my day and cause a short, because that would not be fun. Go ahead and plug this thing in. Turn it on. And the mechanism appears to be running just like it should be. The injection operation works. Let's see, let's put a... Got one of these Fujifilm tapes handy. That's a high bias tape, so if the sensors are working right, should indicate the CRO2 indicator. And indeed it does. I think things are looking up for this deck. Let's see. Seems to fast forward like it ought to. Tape counter's running. See how the auto stop operation works. It usually wouldn't get through that in the past. Oh yeah, that's working a lot better now. Don't think I'm gonna see if this thing is still chowing on tapes with one of those nice high bias ones though. I'll use something a lot more basic and then I'll check out the playback speed as well. See how the auto stop does here at the other end. It does take these Technics decks a while to kick off at the end of a tape. Let's see how the counter reset works. That works well. 
let the play mechanism auto stop. It usually responds a little bit quicker than the winding mechanism. And rewind. And there's the bottom cover back on, the front door back in place. All I have to do now is pick the cover up and put it on, but I'm not going to do that until I've actually had a chance to test this machine's speed. And given that it's now seven minutes past midnight, I don't think I'm going to play with this thing too much more. I'm certainly not going to try to do anything more than a cursory examination of its playback speed to see whether or not it's working. But I think finally, finally this machine is in good fighting trim once again. It's played a lot of tape in its time, and one of the first things that I had to do, of course, was clean and demagnetize the heads, the pinch roller, the capstan drive, which was filthy, and then this recording and playback switch, which is that long silver bar that runs along the bottom there. I had to hit that thing with a shot of deoxid, and then finally I had to replace all the belts in this thing's mechanism because they were all bad. But I think finally there is light at the end of the tunnel. And so it should be interesting to see how well this machine does, especially since I'm not too terribly familiar with the uh, DBX noise reduction process, other than I know that it's extremely aggressive and DBX encoded tapes don't sound at all good unless you've got a DBX decoder. This machine is also capable of decoding DBX records, of which there were a few, and a DBX encoded record can sound just as dead silent and impressive as a compact disc can. Pops and crackles can be effectively eliminated if there are any. So there you have it. Well, battery light's blinking. 